Now I've done a million thermometers on the show. I feel like I've done a ton of them, but this one seems to be the best. This thing's just failed with, failed on me. I don't know how to use these. I mean, kind of like forks or what? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, he's finally back. That's right, you heard it here first, folks. The legend himself, none other than Jack Scalfani, has finally made a return to YouTube. And, well, it's, uh, it's about what you'd expect. Now, for those of you who are unaware like myself, a few months ago, Jack suffered another stroke, which is why he was absent from YouTube for so long. But about two weeks ago, he uploaded a video explaining he was back at home, he had gone through some recovery in the hospital, and that he was going to be returning to up soon. And then a few days ago, he did just that in a video talking about the egg shortage going on, which was, uh, not, not exactly what I expected, to be honest. I don't really know why I was expecting his personality to be a bit different after this, but, uh, it, it wasn't. That's not the video we're going to be covering today, but in that video, he literally just spends the entire time making fun of his audience for reacting to the egg shortage, like basically calling everybody stupid for having any sort of reaction to things going on in the world. It's, uh, it's kind of strange. But I still wanted to make a video upon Jack's return, and I saw a video pop up in my DMs a few times over the last few weeks that I had never seen before. Pulled pork sandwiches in the new wave of Pro Plus. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I've actually not seen this video yet, but I've gotten it multiple times in my DMs, and I kind of skim through the comments, and it seems like something bad happens, so uh, I'm gonna do my favorite thing to do on this channel and go in completely blind. So far, I've never had to scrap a video from doing this, but I feel like eventually it's, it's bound to happen and it is currently two o'clock in the morning and I have a flight leaving at eight so um hopefully today's not the day let's begin please subscribe I'm going to season this part first so let's do that right now get this all rubbed in get the sides rubbed I don't want to waste too much on this side because I got to do the other side too. So make sure you get all the sides, okay? This seems like a criminally small amount of seasoning for this size of meat. I mean, he's talking about getting all the sides and not missing anywhere, and like maybe 20% of the meat that's visible right now has anything on it. Are we just saying things for fun now? Now this last bit, we want to make sure we get into this, into the cracks with all the seasoning, so. I'm just gonna sit here and shake it on over. All right. Alrighty, so it seems like the other side got the same treatment. Can't say I feel like we're off to the greatest start. I feel like this is just way too little seasoning for the size of meat we're working with here. I mean, I'm almost tempted to say from what I can see that there's more meat with nothing on it than there's meat with seasoning on it. So now it's time to wrap this. There. You know what, I'm gonna leave this overnight. Okay, so we're gonna try out a new device on this video too. As we're cooking the pulled pork, I have a new thermometer. Now I've done a million thermometers on the show. I feel like I've done a ton of them. But this one seems to be the best as it's only $29.95. You know, I've got to say it's pretty bold to say that this is the best thermometer out there simply because of the price when you haven't even tested it out yet. I guess we're about to see Jack's intuition put to the test. Okay, we got a little problem here. As I'm going to hook this up, I'm like, okay, well, there's the wire. What is this thing for? And then I come to find out it's not a Bluetooth thermometer. This is not a Bluetooth thermometer. You have to keep your phone plugged into it. Why would you ever expect me to keep my phone plugged into the thermometer for six plus hours or however long I'm cooking my meat. Why would you ever think that I would want to walk around the house or do other things without my phone in my pocket that I can make phone calls or look things up on the internet or text people. Well, firstly, Jack, let this be a lesson to you as to why you don't call something the best product ever before you've even tried it. Or, I mean, I guess read the box in this case. And uh, secondly, I don't think that they do expect you to leave your phone for six hours, Jack. I think you're probably just meant to plug in your phone whenever you want to check the temperature. Seems uh, kind of kind of straightforward to me. So for the next two minutes straight, it's just Jack talking about how the thermometer failed and how it completely stopped working about halfway through the cooking process, which, again, is just 
just another great lesson as to why you should not call something the best of the best when you haven't even taken it out of the box. When we originally heard him say that this thermometer is the best there is, I almost said $10 says this thermometer doesn't even make it through the video, but I didn't want to make myself look silly. God, I should really start gambling more. We're almost at 145. We're at 143 right now. I'm going to flip this for the last part of this cooking process. Take it to 160. Alrighty, so this makes me a little bit nervous. I know whenever I've made pulled pork, and the few times I've talked to other people who've made it themselves, you normally go to like 180 to 200. 160 seems kind of low, especially when you're making it in a way you've never made it before. And I just googled it, and it looks like it's technically done at 165 and not 160, but at that temperature, it won't pull apart. So uh, let's uh, let's see how this goes. I got a big piece here I'm just going to cut right into. Hot, hot, hot. All right. I don't want to cut it all because I'm going to use those forks. I'm going to see if those forks work. This is what they look like. Meat claws. <clears throat> it's almost like it's smoked. I don't know how to use these. I mean, kind of like forks or what? Oh, Jack. I mean, there's there's many clues here, Jack, that something has gone horribly wrong. First off, you're really you're really struggling to pull this meat apart. That should kind of be your first clue. Also, I mean, just just look at it, Jack. Please don't tell me you're gonna eat this undercooked pork. Well, here, let's try this. Just want to shred it. I should just use it in my KitchenAid. Yeah, these are okay. These aren't bad. I'd rather use a fork. Jack, you could use an AK-47 to shred this pork, and it's not going to work the way you want it to because it's not cooked all the way. Look, if the thermometer failed, you can hate on it. Go for it. That's fine. But don't blame the meat claws for the meat not being done. I don't think that's on them. Okay, so this is the part where I make the sandwich. I lost the audio on this part of the video. I have no idea. I think my batteries died. But anyway, I just want to kind of go over how it was made because... The meat was so tender, just like I smoked it outside. Jack, I'm really gonna try and give you the benefit of the doubt here and say that my ears must deceive me because I, I just know. I know for a fact that you did not just call that meat tender. That meat could be turned back into a pig by a skilled necromancer. It's, it's not tender. I'm making the sandwich on a beautiful Hawaiian uh, hamburger bun. Uh, King's Hawaiian hamburger bun has a little sweetness to it. And we're gonna be using the best hot barbecue sauce you'll ever taste. You can use any barbecue sauce you want. And you always want to put coleslaw on a good pulled pork sandwich. It just goes together really well. You got to try it. Yeah, on that topic, you put coleslaw on my pulled pork sandwich without asking, you're gonna see a crime committed. Let's keep the coleslaw on the side for the people who want to put it on their sandwich. Let's just not automatically assume everybody likes disgusting food. Well, guys, what do you think is the worst part of this sandwich? The fact that the meat isn't cooked or the fact that there's coleslaw on it? I'd say it's a pretty tough decision. Now, while I was making this video, I was looking through Jack's social media and I saw that he's deciding to publish a cookbook. So if that ever happens, let me know if you guys would like to see me buy it. I think it could be interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Subscribe.